All right, y'all, what's going on? What's going on? All right, so today I am eating um, a Philly cheesesteak and some fries, okay? So if you're new to the channel, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Even if you aren't new, if you haven't subscribed, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you get notifications the next time we post a video. Leave us some comments down below that. So things you like to see us try, things you like to see us cook, interact with those people who do like to hear from you. I'm going to say grace and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this food that we're about to receive for nourishment, so our bodies and health. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, um... I am leaving work, but I decided to get some cheesesteaks from this one place that um, someone told me was good. Um, so I'm gonna show you in a second. It's really huge. Look at it, it's so cheesy. Mm. But um, nice little cheesesteak here. And it's got three different type of cheeses because I think it was like, I forget what the name, what they called it, but it was like, say the name is Wacky, and it was like Wack, I think it actually is though. It's like Wacky Wednesday or something like that where you can get all three cheeses and stuff like that. He asked me if I wanted regular or with all, or the Wacky Wack style or something like that. But because it's Wednesday, you can get this style for the same price as the regular one. So it looks really good. That's a Grace. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this food that we're about to receive for our so our body and health in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It looks really good. Mmm. I never used to like cheesesteaks, but I like it now. And Look at this bread. That look good. It is good. Mm. I also got some fries. I was gonna wait till I got home, but I want, I wanted to eat it while it was fresh. They also, I think this is some mustard. I need some mustard. Nope. It's some sort of like, it's like a mayo sauce or something. I'm gonna put this on here. Mayo need something. I don't know. It looked good. I'm gonna put that on there, on my sandwich. And then I got some fries. They smell like they have rosemary, or no, is it rosemary and oil on there or something like that? I don't know if y'all, if you've had smash burger fries, but that's exactly what these smell like. Oh, wow. So, this place is um, near my work. It used to be a like a Philly cheesesteak place or whatever, but I never used to get the Philly cheesesteaks. I went and got burgers because you could get. Mm. I just got a text message that just reminded me to make sure I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I just dipped a fry in that um, sauce. They got some sort of Italian seasoning on here or something. It's good. Mm. But yeah, I um and I think my co-friends, I don't know. I remember talking to Lakeisha about it. She was saying that she had wanted to try the place, but I don't know if she was nervous or not. 
I can't recall Mr. Six One Four had ever tried. But Mr. Six One Four, that's AKA Calvin. He know a lot about um, places to eat around here, y'all. I know some people do follow him on Instagram, but he always posts the food pics. Um, I think probably also what made me gravitate towards this was the fact that I watched a show. I forget what the show is called, but the owner from Kane's like hosts the show or whatever. The like the CEO, like owner of Kane's host a show where he, I guess, is helping, like, maybe mom and pop shops, like, um, I don't know if, I don't know if the show existed pre-pandemic or not, but the show that, the episode that I watched yesterday was a mom and pop, like, cheesesteak place, um, in Chicago that was downtown that was kind of, like, struggling because of the panning and stuff like that, so he kind of made their restaurant more, penny friendly or whatever with you know plexiglass and um, like social distance seating and stuff like that so that they could you know attract more customers and stuff so me walking past this place I'm like I probably wanted a cheesesteak I want to get I want to one I want to go to Chicago and try like authentic Italian beefs or whatever. Cause you know, watching Be Love and stuff like that, you just always they all they talk about that often. Like that's one of their like a Chicago staple. So I want to try an authentic one from Chicago. And I want to get dipped. Although if I'm not eating there, I think I should get the the all Jew or whatever on the side. Oh man. Yesterday, um, I did this um, diversity leadership program um, all of 2019. Um, it was through my local United Way and they basically give you training on how to effectively sit on a board of a nonprofit organization. This don't even need it, but also like food, you know. And so, even though we've graduated from the program, we graduated in October, we actually graduated from the program like, had to be like a week or two before no, maybe a week or something after I had, the, right around when I had the buggy. So I like, the whole program we worked on like a service project and I missed the actual implementation of our service project and I missed graduation. So, even though the program is over, we still keep in contact and we have a group me chat and so I, yesterday, have I had been seeing like messages, like notifications for group me. I didn't know I had missed so many messages, but I finally got on there yesterday. I responded to the most recent stuff, but then I was just looking back to see, you know, what all I missed, and I didn't know, like I missed all holiday texts and all this other stuff. But one of our cohort members passed away due to COVID, man, and I, that just makes me so sad. He was young. He passed away in December of last year. And I'm sorry, like, it's, it's freaking June and I'm just now finding out, man. I'm not friends with um a lot of people on, on social media. I'm not friends with a lot of the cohort on social media. Some people I knew, um, 
from other leadership programs I've done or work. One chick I knew of her because I knew her sister. But yeah, man. So rest in peace, Jordan, man. That's just so sad. I think so. Um, one is sad that he passed away. And then also quite a few of my other cohort members had COVID. And quite a few had to be hospitalized because of it. And I'm just like, man, I'm so sad, man. So sad. And, um, you know, some of them are still like, some people said they were still dealing with, you know, after effects or whatever of having it. Man, but I'm glad they were able to come through it or whatever. But one person in particular, him and Jordan, had COVID at the same time, and they both had pretty pretty severe cases. And he said that he had he didn't know that he had passed away. He said that he had been keeping in contact with them, and. I think he said it seemed like they were talking like every week or every other week or whatever, updating each other on their symptoms and progress and all that good stuff. And he found out when everybody else found out that he passed away. It was just crazy, man. Literally broke my heart yesterday as I was reading. And uh, that's like um, him and then, um, well, he's the first person I feel like I've known that in that close of proximity that, that has passed away, but I've known quite a few other people close to me, like, that have had COVID. Man, oh man. I didn't realize it was a um, baseball game going on today. I'm like still downtown near my, like I said, because I wanted to eat it while it was still fresh. So I don't know if I could not get all three of these cheeses because all three of them just, it just tastes so good. I can't remember what the name of the place is. Maybe I'll be able to. <clears throat> Google it. Or maybe it's say it on I didn't get a receipt. So I have. But you never see it on my um on my you know banking app or whatever. But I think it used to be called Sandman, I think, or something. Like they had breakfast. Did I ever get the breakfast from there? I might have got the bread, but the the thing about that this place though, or at least when it was not before we came under new management, was that um it was so cheap. Like I could get a night, and it was a nice size burger. Okay, I mean the bun was just perfect. It was like five guys before like you it'd get all soggy from the sauce and stuff. But that's what the bun tastes like to me. A Five Guys burger bun. Nice little fresh ingredients on the burger. 
I mean, I got cheese, lettuce, tomato, you know, whatever else you want it. Um, and then fries for like five bucks, man. And you can't beat that. They would close down for the winter time and then open back up in the spring. But the one time when they closed down, I want to say maybe they closed down the winter. I don't know, maybe the winter that I, after I had the bubby or whatever. Either after I had them, before I had them, and they just never opened back up. And I was sorry, I'm like, dang, when they gonna open back up? And then when they opened back up, man, I'm, this might be the third new owner because I don't think that these was the same people that was there when I went like one time after they finally had reopened. I don't think these are the same people. And it was kind of cool because you could order outside. It was just like a little window outside. You just order through the window. A walk-up draft. Thing. This is so good. I don't remember what the cheeses were. I know one of them was pro -long. Mm. Very tasty. Man, <laughs> one day, one time. So typically, it's like in the spring we have like um we have a big hunger relief campaign that um was called hunger relief and it, and it and it benefits our local um, food bank and so. One of the big pushes is to buy tickets to our local baseball, minor league baseball game or whatever, a game. It's usually during the day and you can go and, you know, hang out with your coworkers or really that's really a day off, honestly, because once you get to the game, I mean, you can stay or you can leave. It would be just so funny, like everybody be leaving, okay? Unless you just really enjoy the minor league baseball, which some people do. I actually like watching baseball in person. But I also like having a day off as well. And it was only like $25, I think, for a tick for for a cooker. And go up in there, you can get some lunch if you wanted to. Mingle with and I mean, you know, all of our, of my little area, you know, mingled with the higher ups and stuff. It was so funny because somebody who's like really, really high up. I saw him at the game and uh, what I did, I uh, inadvertently called him old. <laughs> I forget what we was talking about, but he was like, okay, so you're saying I'm oh, I'm like, no, no, no. He's a really cool dude, though. African-American, like, really high up. I also often ask, or I think I've asked him before, I know he's asked, been asked the question, like, did he feel like the token black person because he was the only, per only African-American at his level or even that high in our area, like the highest, uh, excuse me, before this year, he was like the highest African-American above like a manager. We had uh, like managers, like the level above me, we had black people, but we ain't above that, nope. <laughs> But we bust through that still in this uh, this year, which is good, cause 
you know, I, I expressed to him and to other leaders, like, before, you know, those people bust through that ceiling, even with the guy that I was just talking about, just like, he's the only person, and it doesn't really give me confidence that to know that I can obtain that level of, or be at that level because I don't see anybody else that looks like me. But now that I do, it gives me hope. Now, whether or not they're going to let me get at that level is, you know, another story. But still gives me hope, you know. And um, I'll be trying to tell them because... I mean, I told y'all before, like, our, what is he at, SVP? He's my AVP's boss. I don't be getting into titles, that's why I don't be knowing like, they, they who they are, you know? But, um, he had called me once, because, um, he did, like, these little road shows, they call them, where he came around different areas of the, all the people that roll up to him and, you know, just kind of getting a, a lay of the land, getting some feedback, seeing where people, you know, people had at and also explaining some program that they, some pilot program that they had rolled out. And I had sent them an email and I was like, you know, just, just basically, you know, shedding a lot of light on different concerns and all the other good stuff. And um, instead of replying to the email like in email format, he ended up calling me to discuss my email. And I was just so taken aback. One, I mean, I don't know. I, I love that, that he did that or whatever. And he's all about, you know, having diversity or whatever. I keep telling my co-friends that he he like black people. That's all I'm saying. Okay. He... I think that if he knew what uh, we always say, I feel like if he knew what he knew now, his wife would probably be black. But uh, yeah, he. Um, but but on oh, seriously though, he is all about diversity. Like that's something that he continuously brings up with his uh, the leaders under him or whatever to. The, excuse me, challenge them to push the envelope on that piece and stuff like that, which I really do like about him and stuff. And I do think it's genuine. I don't think that he's like, you know, just checking a box or anything like that. I think that that's something that he's really passionate about. But anywho, he called me and I thought that was pretty cool. We had a conversation. Now, I was, I was going somewhere with this, but I've since lost my train of thought. Dang, I lost my train of thought, and I'm sorry about that, because it was going to be good. I'm telling y'all it was going to be good. And then I had some other stuff to say to y'all, and I forgot that, too. Let me see here for a second, see if I can remember. I was talking about diversity. You saw it. Oh, okay. So, I was telling, when I was on the the call with him, I was telling him that, you know, because he's all talking about, you know, asking me ideas about how they can recruit, like, diverse candidates and stuff like that. And my point was, that's great that you wanted to recruit diverse candidates, but you got to uh, show some diversity in the in the organization. You can't sit up here and say, you want this diverse candidate to come here, but then when they when they see your leadership, they don't see nobody that look like them or whatever. And I was telling them, you know, that now that those few people have broke the ceiling higher than the level above me, that does give me hope, but also it needs to be more. We need to do more. You know what I'm saying? Not just a couple, like it needs to be all the way diverse. Now they don't have a problem with hiring women or having women at those levels, but they are white women. 
to be honest, you know what I'm saying? And then at the top, top, it's all white men. Like, there are, oh, let me say it's not all white men. There are like, what, two? I'm thinking of one. And the other one got a name that seemed like he's not a white man, but I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, but, you know, I, but I applaud them for at least trying to change the face of the organization because for a long time, it's been just predominantly white men at the time. And it was so funny because this one lady who she also is really big on diversity and stuff. And, uh, they had announced that somebody had took over some, a role or got promoted to a role or something like that. And she was just like, let me guess another white man. <laughs> and she white herself. But I mean, hey, you know what I'm saying? These folks, they they tired of it too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, I guess that's all I got. I'm about to start rambling. I do need to get home because I have a meeting that I need to be in attendance for. So yeah, I'm peace out up on y'all. Oh, one one last thing I need to tell y'all was that this dress that I got on right today. Usually when I have dresses, I have to figure out where I'm going to put my badge because I don't have, especially if there are no pockets. So today I put my badge on this little, this thing right here. And when I was leaving the cheesesteak place, I just happened to look down and I don't know if it was because of the weight of my badge. I don't know what, or maybe I accidentally tugged on it because my, my badge is not that heavy, but, um, and it's only my car on there. But yeah, my, my little thing, this thing was a little down, a little too low. And I said... I think it was, it might have been all the way down. It comes like, you know, just right there. But I think it was all the way down. And I'm like, well, goodness gracious, how long you been flashing people? Now, luckily, the nursing bra that I got on, it, you know, it don't, it ain't too revealing. It actually covers up really well, even when I pop it to nurse or whatever. But yeah, I'm just like, uh, ma'am. All right, but that's it. Anywho, that's it. And that's all, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. Now, so things you like see us try, things you like see us cook, interact with us, because we like to hear from you. And subscribe to the channel. Like, subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notifications the next time we post a video. We will see you in the next one.